Oh, good morning, Sunday. We're on November 8th. Sunny, cool day on the island. And I say cool. But let's just sort of get right to it sort of thing. There's, uh, this election in the States has got to be the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my 70 plus years on the planet. Uh, where do you start? Where does one start? I suppose one starts uh, with the premise that if all people do is watch mainstream media, well, they know, those people know one side. Uh, they're getting the, they're getting what everybody, in, what whoever it is behind all this crap wants you to hear. And if you were doing some research on the other side, listening to alternate other voices, other experts, you know that this election is in doubt. There, it hasn't been officially called. And why is that? Well, mainstream media isn't telling you that. The, co the college has to, the electoral college actually certifies and calls the election and names the winners. That hasn't been done yet. But all the major networks in North America, all of the major networks, think about this, have declared, have declared a winner. And it is nowhere in the... Nor in the regulations of the Constitution or whatever in the U.S. that mainstream media calls the shots, but they are. And of course, all mainstream media in Canada follow suit. But no, they're all sort of, I think, all controlled by the same puppet masters. And then you go over to Australia and New Zealand, the same thing. And you get into Europe, the same thing. Uh, I think... Uh, from the last, the last information that I was able to find, uh, the uh, Biden has received congratulations from uh, Canada. Of course, Trudeau will be right in there in a dirty shirt. Uh, Ireland, South Korea, Australia, France, Germany, England, Hungary, Israel, Palestine. But I've been able to sort of verify that those leaders have called to congratulate the person who's the winner who may not be the winner at the end. Well, he may, but he may not. It's interesting to note that two countries who haven't weighed in are Russia and China. I mean, they're the two other powers in the world. Uh, and they're sort of looking at this, just sort of shaking their heads at the stupidity of it all. And now, social media, media, the Three Stooges, Twitter, Facebook, and Google, are all blocking or censoring any information coming through to show that there may be a problem with this election. There's some idiosyncrasies, there's some, obviously it looks like election, could be election fraud. And they're, they're censoring that. Mainstream media isn't talking about it. So there's either, I think, there's a, there's a couple of things. Either the election was totally won by the Democrats, and you've got to think of this when you say that. What people in their right mind would elect a leader who, if not dementia, has something resembling something similar to that. Think about that. Who would elect a feeble mind to run a country? Especially the, the country that thinks they're the biggest country and the, the most powerful country in the world. Who would put an idiot there? Now how can a person who did very little campaigning, the biggest crowd he got was what, a couple hundred? Um, even at his, his, he came out and actually made a speech. Just really blew me away that they would come out 
and sort of uh, come out and sort of self-appoint themselves as the winners when there is nothing really certified yet. And in that you could hear a couple car horns honking. There weren't a lot of car horns because you could tell it, <laughs> a couple of car horns. You can go back and listen to his speech and see that, hear that, listen for that. And a few people hollering. But it was not a lot of people there. Where in Trump's campaign, his smallest audience would blow that out of the water. And here's an ex supposed to be an acceptance speech. If he's got so many followers and so many people excited, do you think he'd grab a, a, a crowd bigger than uh, his 200 or people, his uh, official sitting in circles and a few in the audience? So to me, it just doesn't smell right. It doesn't look right. And when you look, you'll look at the inconsistencies. You'll look at the inconsistency. Uh, you look at the computer voting. There's a real question of this computer voting. Uh, the machines and the software used, uh, apparently, Diane Feinstein's husband has a major shareholder in that company. Now, Dr. Shiva has pointed this out on two occasions that the computers are the software that is programmed and can be programmed can be altered on the fly with algorithms to, to get the outcome you need. If uh, you got a thousand votes and I got a thousand votes and they want you to be the winner, well that can be set. So they take, multiply yours by 2.5, multiply my votes by 0.5, you have 2,500 votes, I have 500, you're the winner. I, I'm not a I'm not a computer software engineer. Dr. Shiva's got four degrees in MIT. He's got his doctorate degree. He under he's been programming I think since he was 14. He assisted with the email email pr protocols. He claims that he's got a lawsuit in Massachusetts just for this reason that mathematically impossible the numbers that they're sort of showing from. Uh, statistically impossible for him to lose as he did without manipulation. Now there's question of that in several states in several states with this election. In one state in one county they have found now there's two numbers coming up 6,000 or 5,500 votes went to Biden that were Trump's they're calling it a computer glitch. Now, that's easy. That, that, that's an easy excuse because a clue glitch means just a mechanical problem, no deal. But if these are being programmed and these are being altered, that's another story. So there's 47 other counties apparently that use the same software and system. Now if that same glitch appears, I mean those numbers are really skewed. So why would somebody be making an acceptance speech with all of this knowledge going through? I'm wondering where in the hell the Attorney General of the U.S. is. Nobody, what, is he working quietly in the shadows or he's just sort of ignoring it? Then you look at the mail-in but the mail-in fiasco. Dead, pe dead man voting. Interesting. If you were born in 1800, do you think you'd be, uh, you'd be voting, be alive to be voting, or have the mental capacity to be voting? That would put you out. If you're born in 1800, how old are you? Think about that. Sort of crazy. Mainstream media is not talking about that. We don't have journalists anymore. We have controlled talking heads who are well paid, obviously. Uh, all their, they have no professional integrity, I don't think at all. Uh, the mail-in boats that come in in the middle of the night, people bringing bags, the video of people collecting, collecting ballots after the election. 
Pennsylvania, a judge sort of extending, extending election hours and election voting time. Probably one of the most frightening things is that in a lot of the places where they were counting ballots or where voting was going on, observers were not allowed in. And these are democratic states who are controlling the counting and the, and the election. Observers were not allowed in. Think about that. In Canada, we call them scrutineers. I mean, that, that, if that happened here, you'd be sort of alarmed. Or does it happen in Canada? We're too damn stupid to realize it. But I don't think so. I know some scrutineers. I know people who work with elections. And they're, you know, they're pretty uh, professional about it. I think uh, the ones I know, there's no way in hell they're going to sort of mess things around. They have some integrity. And, and in some cases, they even covered in windows, so people couldn't even see inside. Now, if everything is above board, and if everything has been copacetic, why would you do that? If there's no skullduggery going on, why would you do that? Because you can, or because you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing? If everything was above board, and everything was copacetic, why, why the silence from the mainstream media? Why the the, pull, the, the total pull, pull of blood roll over your eyes by the mainstream media? Why the censoring of the, of the Three Stooges? Why? If everything is above board, uh, and if there's free speech in a democracy, or as they call a democracy, vote tabulation started and then stopped, why? And then more votes come in in the middle of the night. Uh, you have to look at box 13 of uh, Landside Lyndon, or I call him Landside Johnson in Texas, 1948, I think it was. I mean, he did those kind of shenanigans. This has been going on for a while. Now, so the big, the big question is, why... Why it looks like a, a total cover up from the top on down. Think about that. I mean, in his their acceptance speech, Biden and and Harris are talking about God protecting the truth. And you're looking at these people with all of the baggage that they have, all the bullshit that they've done, that they have been accused of doing, and they can look at look at a camera and say, God protects the truth. We're worried about human decency. We're worried about integrity and honesty. There was only a few, a few. There was less people, less people watching uh, online watching that speech when I was watching it than at Trump's smallest uh, smallest time. I think there was like four thousand people or something on when I was the one I watched. Four thousand viewers. And like I say, it sounded like two cars in the parking lot and a few people hollering. Interesting. 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 But anyway, I think... Now there's another, another side to this thing. You know, we know the globalist agenda to take over the states. And whether you believe that or not, well, you're just way behind the times a few times if you don't. Uh... You just look at Mark, uh, the Democrats' list. They're putting the list they're putting together of people who worked for Trump, supported Trump, or voted for Trump. Stalin did that. Mao did that. Every violent dictator did that. Every crazy in Germany they did that. And we all know what happened in Germany. I find it, well, that's why I'm finding it sort of interesting, Israel sort of sent their congratulations already. I guess everybody wants their bread butter gun both sides, and they're sort of careful, and around the edges, so. Politics are, uh, politics is a strange, strange thing. But I think this isn't over yet if uh, the socialists want to take over. 
And I don't think Americans want socialists. Socialism. Oh, there's some uh, people that they've got paid to march in the streets and burn buildings down. So it makes it appears that they do. But I don't think in general people want to be a, go into a socialist communist country, be turned into that. So it's not over yet, I don't think. I mean, you rig the vote, you get your puppet in, get your goofball in. Think about that. And now you start more violence in the streets. And you want to create enough violence that you can blame on the Trump side. So with that, at least you can go sort of uh, do whatever you do to people, whatever Stalin did. More people were killed there than is imaginable. Same with Mao. So you get enough problems going, you get it so agitated that people say enough of this, enough, and they'll They'll slide right in just to get rid of all the violence and all the all the strife and all the shortages. They'll they'll sign up for for anything. I think that's sort of the plan. They they've done that in many countries. And the crazy thing is, the American CIA has done that in many countries. Rigged elections are like this. I mean, it's just on the record. You can just sort of go and look. You know, you go from the drone king to the uh, Libya queen, and all the, uh, the Benghazi queen, all the nasty shit that these people have done. And uh, maybe that's why the Republicans don't like Trump, the Democrats don't like Trump, and a lot of the world don't like Trump. Because he is not doing that. He is not playing that sort of a game. Or maybe he's in on it. That's the other side of this. Maybe he, what if he is in on it? And he's playing the fall guy in this, in this uh, crazy Greek tragedy sort of idea. And uh, who knows? But I think anybody who is just watching mainstream news and, and rubbing their hands do not realize what's really happened. And, uh, of course, they will still hand out the tin hats to, to everybody who is looking at all sides and saying there's something wrong here. You, and trying to ring the alarm bells, like, wake up, people. Wake up, there's something really crazy going on here. You know, I've talked to a lot of people who just sort of shake their head and say, you just can't accept something happening. And to me, it's just, well, it is a big deal, because as the U.S. goes, so do, so do the rest of us go. Don't kid yourself, some of the rest of us go. And uh, so there is a concern to be alarmed. Uh, and it's not because of who's winning the election or not, but it's the process. When you have a crooked control process, no matter who's winning or losing, you have to be alarmed. If you have some idiotic twits, psychopathic twits controlling this thing, and you just stand still, and say nothing. I mean, they did that in Germany, middle of last century, and we still, in Canada, it is a, it's a hate crime to sort of even really get into too much of a discussion about that. But people stood by and watched shit happen. And for people who were just watching CNN or watching CBC and believing what those idiotic talking heads are telling you, well, I guess there's no hope. We're done. We're totally fucking done if people are doing that. So I think people have to be alarmed. They have to start looking at this. No matter what side you're, what side you're supporting, you've got to look at this process. If this is a flawed process and it's being controlled by external forces, there is something wrong with the picture. And people have to sort of stand up and say, whoa, and all mainstream media is bullshitting, is bullshitting us. Even the one that pretended not, not to be a, a fake news. Fox, they're in on it the same way. I mean, all of those people that we sort of, uh, some people sort of quote and like, they're all in on this scam. Interesting. What's your take on the thing? 
Uh, what is your take on it? Have you thought about it? Thought about it at all? Or are you just accepting what people are saying? I guess it is what it is, but it's it's an alarming is what it is. Take care. We'll see you again, unless we sort of get arrested. Bye for now. <laughs>